I mean, what even is divination, really? Happy Tuesday, Potterheads! Today we are talking about Chapter 16 of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. And we're just going to talk about how confused I am about divination. But first, if you need to read the recap, go ahead and pause the video and read that in the description below. And if you're new here, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. You can subscribe by clicking that red button below there and ring the notification bell so that you always know when I upload and you don't miss a single video. But if you want to start over from any of the seasons previously, you can click that card in the top left right there. You guys already know this. I don't understand divination. I'm just... I'm really confused by it, and I don't like engaging with things that confuse me, and it makes me uncomfortable, and it frustrates me. But, like, I can't talk about this chapter without talking about divination, because it's basically the entire purpose of the chapter, so... Here we go. Maybe we should start with a little historical context. So, divination is... A concept that actually exists within our world, and not just in the world of Harry Potter. I was about to say real, but I think we can all agree that, at the very least, it is... Unproven? scientific part of my brain is ringing so many alarms right now, and it cannot believe that I'm actually actively trying not to offend the divination community. But science cannot explain everything, at least not yet. We are talking about magic, after all. Dictionary.com, the number one search result that pops up after you search for divination definition, says that divination is the practice of attempting to foretell future events or discover hidden knowledge by occult or supernatural means. The occult. I mean, I'm not the biggest believer in all this stuff, but even I know that the use of that word word is going to bring certain negative connotations to most people. For a more balanced definition, good old Merriam-Webster defines it as the art or practice that seeks to foretell or foresee future events or discover hidden knowledge by the interpretation of omens or by the aid of supernatural powers. That sounds more like Trelawney to me. After doing some light research, it looks like there are a crap ton of methods of divination. To list a few, crystal orb gazing, reading tea leaves, reading tarot cards, palmistry, pendulum divination, osteomancy, lithomancy, Nancy, numerology. The list goes on. So it's kind of hard to get a comprehensive history of divination, but basically as long as humans have been able to believe in something beyond what we can see with our own eyes, it has existed across all cultures. Some people even claim that praying is like divination. It's so interesting. Where am I going with this? All oh, right, I'm confused. Mostly, I'm just confused with the validity of divination as a school subject. So I guess my confusion is probably less with the divination itself and more with how Hogwarts treats its students who can't do it. Like, if you fail elective classes, what happens? Does it just mean that you just can't take it next year? Like, that's fine. But does it have no bearing on your overall performance through your seven years at Hogwarts? I don't know. I'm not the first to bring it up by any means, but the pedagogy at Hogwarts is just nonsensical. Okay, but if we're going to talk about it, I have to ask, is the crystal ball exam a fair final exam? Seeing something inside of a crystal appears to be something that you can't quite perfect or practice via instruction, but is something that would just exist within you? You can look at tea leaves and approximate a shape and compare that to like a field guide or something. You could do the same with reading stones or tarot cards or palmistry or other things like that. But with a crystal ball, it's not like there's something there that you then have to interpret. You probably just won't see anything if you aren't already good at divination. So it really seems to me like that's not that fair of a final exam. Also, how can Trelawney say what students did or didn't see? Like, Harry had her fully convinced that he was actually seeing something until she just basically disagreed with the the likelihood of what he saw? Sure, she could argue that she already knows what's going to end up happening, but clearly she doesn't because Harry ends up being right. Unless you want to get into the dynamics and the mechanics of time travel, which like, please God, don't make me do that for at least three more chapters. So what right does Trelawney have to decide whose version of events sounds legitimate or not? Regardless of your opinions on the validity of divination itself, I think we can all agree that a crystal ball exam really doesn't seem like a fair final exam. Unless, like I said, them passing the class only matters for whether or not they take it next year. But like, if that were the case, Trelawney would have so few seventh year students. Speaking of the students, and of Trelawney herself really, I have to believe that part of the reason that some of them feel like they're good at it is like the conditions of the classroom. It's constantly uncomfortably warm. There's always an overwhelming aroma. The lighting is usually bad. I'd be willing to bet that she's had students hallucinating in the past and they were just like taking that as divination. I bet that's how she gets most of her credibility and that's why she never comes down from her office. But hold on, Kev. Who's to say that that doesn't make someone more capable of being a seer? Maybe if you're able to lull your brain into a more sleepy mode, maybe it's more receptive to these supernatural powers or energies or whatever it is that flows 
flows into a seer and makes them able to divine things. So is it actually possible for anyone to become a seer, or is Trelawney right that someone like Hermione can just be born without the natural gift? I mean, in truth, it's probably a compromise between the two. I imagine it's kind of like whether or not you're able to be hypnotized. Like someone who is super open to the idea, really believes in it, probably has to work less to be able to access those parts of themselves. But of course there are others who have more walls around those kinds of things, and so it's harder for them to access Here it. Here I go, sounding like Trelawney and turning this into some kind of like elite and aspirational thing. I guess what I'm trying to say is that I don't think it's necessarily something you're either born with or you're not. Like most things, it probably falls on a spectrum, and neither end or any point is better than any other point or anywhere in between. It just changes the amount of work that you have to put in to get to one place or another. So yeah, it probably is possible for anyone to become a seer if they work hard enough. Because I think we're led to believe that even Trelawney is on the lower end of the seer spectrum after all. She's like the horoscope section of the divination community. Like, she just makes makes these broad, vague statements that can probably be applied to anything, but occasionally she's spot on. And when she's spot on, she gets kind of scary. The servant will break free and set out to join his master. The Dark Lord will rise again, greater and more terrible than before. But why does she get so weird here? Her body goes rigid, her voice changes drastically, her eyes start to roll back into her head. Like, what is it that's taking over her body and her brain and changing? channeling this message from the future into her here, and why can't she remember it? I did a bit of research, and it seems that people generally agree that we can attribute her not remembering this stuff to just her having weak powers as a seer. Which, of course, McGonagall would love to hear. One person who described their qualifications simply as expert on Quora said that Trelawney probably has great powers, but she just doesn't realize it yet. And so her good instincts for sensing danger kind of just force her to relay this message because of the importance of it. And so while she's making these predictions, according to our self-described expert, uh, she, her brain is in the mystic realm, but she's just not quite aware of it. Basically, she just needs to practice more. Pretty much all my research has led me to the conclusion that Sybil Trelawney is basically just that so Raven, but worse at it. So to answer my question about what is possessing her body and brain, it turns out it's pretty much just her own magic. I guess you could say it's like when Harry speaks parcel tongue without realizing it, or when his wand acts of its own accord, or even when a kid accidentally does magic. Magic just exists as an energy in the world around them, and sometimes it can act on its own without having to be prompted by the witch or wizard. Gee, thanks magic for not just killing Voldemort on your own. Would have made things a whole lot easier, huh? Selfish magic. You know, I really wanted to do another In Defense of Romani for the small moment when Hermione is flattered when Ron says he doesn't know what's gotten into her. I, I figured through weeks in a row might be a bit much, really. So, you know, unofficial, I guess, but this moment still definitely supports Romine. I'm just saying. Okay, you guys, time for this week's fun question. Would you rather be able to see into the past and see exactly everything that happened, or would you rather be able to see into the future but know that you can't change anything about it at all? For me, like, obviously, see into the past. The future one would be kind of dreadful. But let me know which one you would choose in the comments below. And that's going to be all for us this week, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe and share and hit the notification bell and if you really love being a part of this community there are ways you can support me in the description and on screen via my patreon and my merchandise here are some other videos that i think you'll enjoy if you liked this one your assignment for next week is to read chapter 17 that's cat rat and dog so make sure you guys read that by next tuesday and until then happy reading nox